The Everglades is a special place. That's the underlying tone for every Everglades show that ever was. That's the underlying tone for anyone that you speak to talking about the Everglades. There's healing powers that are undeniable. There's this connectivity with nature that is unmatched. There's this ability to find yourself and to lose yourself and to just be with nature as it was intended to be. To say that it's a privilege to introduce children and the next generation to the Everglades is a vast understatement. It has absolutely become our mission, our generation's legacy, to find a way to restore the Everglades and to leave it to the next generation better than when we found it. I drive through these gates every single day, and um, it's work. But today, it's completely different. There is no pressure, there's no um, anxiety, there's no wondering what's gonna happen. This is a special day. Anytime I get to fish with my girls, it's just the pleasure of my life. Um, it's why I work so hard, it's, it's why I do what I do, just try to save it. And um, to see the Everglades through their eyes, that raw excitement, of seeing all this wildlife and catching these fish, it just takes me back to when I was a kid. Hey guys, how's it going? Subscribe, like and subscribe. Allison is my middle daughter and um, she's 15 years old and she is a one of a kind. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty rare actually that I get to have her on the boat because she does not like to get hot. She doesn't like to be sweat. I just literally got a force fight from my neck. Oh my God, they're all over me. She, you know, she's not in it for the for all day, but but she, I, I know she loves to be on the boat with, with Daddy and and uh, with her sisters, and um, she loves the Everglades because of you know just the the place, you know, and the and the nature and and the fish. She loves to fish. When is when Ali, me, and Daddy we all catch one at nearly the same time. Marley is my, my youngest. She's 11, and she is an athlete. Um, she's an unbelievable student in school, and she loves the outdoors, loves the outdoors. What's amazing is that when I had daughters uh, when I was younger, I didn't understand that, that they'd have interest in fishing. It's much to my surprise, and I mean, just a, again, a pleasure of my life, they are in love with the Everglades. The first time I we went to the Everglades, I was four years old and I remember I caught my first redfish and I was freaking out because I thought it was so, like, so much weight on me and so much pressure and I was stressing so much just to catch this little redfish. And then when I finally caught it, I, it looked disgusting, but I was super happy that I caught it. Let me see what he got. Bring him over this left side. Oh, oh my God, it's so tiny. What is it? Uh, it's not real anymore. It's a snook? How do you know it's a snook? Because it has the black line. That's it's right. Body. What is that line? I don't know. <laughs> That's the lateral line. It's an external nerve, so it can feel the vibrations in the water. Ooh. <laughs> Daddy. Okay, let's catch another one. When we travel around the state, there are so many issues with, that affect the water and the estuaries and the watershed around the state. In the Everglades, there is a smoking gun, and that smoking gun is lack of fresh water. It's evident everywhere you go in the Everglades, but not anything more evident than in 2017 when Mother Nature delivered it on a silver platter for everyone to see. We experienced two major hurricanes, major watershed from just general rainfall that was was completely off the charts. And that water resulted in the best wading bird nesting season in recorded history. Since then, we've seen nothing but juvenile, snook, redfish, trout, and tarpon booming in every direction. It's mother nature saying, hey, I need fresh water. And the more fresh water we deliver to the Everglades, the more we can expect her to bounce back in ways we've never seen. Go down in the water really slow. Make sure he's got some, his gills are going, so that he's got some air. Put him down in the water. <laughs> if you put him all the way in the water, then he won't splash you. Go slowly. Okay, let's do it again. This segment is brought to you by Penn. 
Let the battle begin. Florida Sportsman Waterman is sponsored in part by these fine companies. Go, 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 really, really. Oh my God. Get him, Allie. Yes. Bring him around the other side. Oh, another I got another red, red face. Got it, got it, Marley? How Get you, it. How do you push it? Now push it forward. There you go. Get it. Yes. Good job. Good job, Ali. Okay, I'll hold it. You want to do a baby. retake. <laughs> Good job. What the Everglades means to me is like an escape from my family, to have fun, and it's like to escape from work and stress. And it provides like a, a job for my dad, and it makes me have fun. Get him, Marley. Get him out of there, Marley. My favorite part was just fighting against the fish, and that made me feel superior. <laughs> made me feel superior because that was a big fish, and I remember when I first caught my fish, there was a little baby, and I was struggling, and now I overcome a huge fish. Oh, it's huge! Huge snow. It's easy, Marley. Don't pull real hard. Nice and easy. Now pull that way. Mm -hmm. Now pull back towards me. Reel, reel up a little bit. Slowly. Oh, no. Wrong way. Got him. Yeah. Give me five. Good job. Yeah. Right. Oh, that was just full. The weather was coming. The roll of thunder in the distance was, was alarming, there's no doubt. But the girls wanted to keep fishing. I mean, they, the bite had just picked up. Um, it was almost every single cast they were, they were catching a fish, and they just wanted to keep going. It made me so proud. Here, Allie, let's get a double. There you go. Ooh, I caught a redfish. Got him. Scoop. Good job, Marley. Thank you. So in the fishing world, when two people on the boat are hooked up, it's called a double. But for some reason, my Marley ha has renamed that and reclassified that, how don't dare you correct her. If you catch two fish at one time, it's called a double whammy. And from the get-go this morning, all she wanted to do was catch a double whammy. I, I... Control your fish, lady. There we and go. That right oh. my fish. And that is a double whammy. <laughs> Feeling pretty blessed to have spent another day in Everglades National Park with Mar Marley and Allison. And today was just another one of those days that, that I know they won't forget, but I most certainly will never forget. Join us for this week's On the Conservation Front as we dive deeper into critical water issues facing the state. Florida Sportsman has been leading the fight on the conservation front lines for over 50 years. The Florida Everglades is a unique watery wilderness. It is also vital to the very sustainability of South Florida's wildlife, its fisheries, and human population. Let's join Philip Cushlin, president of Friends of the Everglades, to discuss this unique but threatened ecosystem. Philip Everglades River grass author Marjorie Stoneman Douglas once famously said there's only one Everglades in the world. It's actually made up of many ecosystems. What are they? So South Florida is really unique in that in this one geographic area, you have all of these unique ecosystems all coexisting together. And so you sort of run the gamut from the tropical hardwood forests to the sawgrass prairie, to the big cypress swamps, uh, to the pine rocklands, to the mangroves, to the seagrass beds and the coral reefs offshore, all occurring in one place. Why is hydrology of the Everglades so vital to the estuaries, fish nurseries, and even the very sustainability of South Florida? So hydrology has always been critical to the development of South Florida, uh, first and foremost because it's uh, our water supply, right? The Everglades is responsible for filtering and recharging the aquifers that we depend on uh, to survive down here. Um, and in addition, um, the Everglades and hydrology is responsible for all of these unique ecosystems uh, which have led to um, the tourism industry that has fueled the growth in South Florida. You know, man has altered Everglades water flow much to its demise. Can we hope to reverse this? 
In a way, no, right? We can't reverse what we've done in terms of uh, artificially controlling water management in South Florida. And so it's incumbent on us now um, to make sure we get that water management right. And we can get a lot of cues for how the natural system used to work, and how it should work in terms of deciding how to do that. This segment is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Florida Sportsman Waterman is sponsored in part by these fine companies. When you want to highlight Everglades National Park, you can't only show the saltwater side of the park. You have to show the other side that is just literally untouched and unbelievable. And if you haven't experienced it, you have to. When I thought about going up into the freshwater and, and targeting bass and, and seeing the other side of the Everglades, I thought first about my buddy, Captain Albert Hernandez. We're gonna go out to the back, uh, back in the marsh about about three miles. Off the grid. Off the grid. And the only way to get there is by airboat, via airboat, and uh, we're gonna do a little bass fishing. Hopefully we can get on some, uh, some nice ones. Um, Evan's been catching some real nice ones. And also show you a couple gators and, and show you uh, that buck, you know, that actual backcountry how it looks out there. Oh, this place is super cool. How long have you been coming out here? Um, in this area, um, on these airboats, about six years. Mm -hmm. I mean, doing it, you know, as a, as a business. Right. Um, but as far as that, you know, with buddies, just running around, kind of like what we talked about, you know, just running around and, and stuff like that, just about pretty much all my life. But getting on the airboat and coming out back here, um, not only in this area, but a little bit further west and also to the north, um, every bit about 15 or 20 years. Um, got it. Oh, that's a big, big fish. Big fish, bro. Big fish. Big He's coming right big. to me. He's coming right to me. He's coming right to me. Jeez. Oh, we got him deep. Oh, you saw him, right? Yeah. <laughs> big fish. Oh, man. I was smoking this on the worm. You saw that of him? He gave us the swim base. He's like, I'm going to sneak a worm in here and catch all the big fish. <laughs> my first memory of the Everglades was a long time ago when my dad took me with his friend on his, on his airboat. And we just went, we went fishing, we caught a whole bunch of small bass. It was just amazing to see that fishery and experience it for myself. It just opened me to a whole new fishery and a whole new wildlife. I just couldn't get away from it. It was beautiful and I loved it. There's a good one. Get him out. Nice work. You got a rotation going here. <laughs> Oof. You're so pretty, man. Oh. See how black they are, Ben? Yeah. I love the color. That yeah. natural green, that dark green is so good. You go around the house and you get those uh those like those peacock lakes and stuff. Uh-huh. They got those white, white bellies. Nice, I heard that. Oh, nice fish. Nice fish, nice fish. Woo-wee. Yeah boy. Nice fish. He wants to take you right in there, huh? Awesome, guys. Man. Awesome. Nice. Hope you get out of here with him. Solid fish, Benny. Solid fish. Got him, bub. Yes. Yes. Awesome. All right. I'm putting on a swim bait. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let me go ahead and fish the ones. Those those bites are pretty awesome, man. They are. <laughs> and how he's screaming across like that, trying Even to get into the. If you don't the, catch as many, guys. just the bites by themselves are worth it. Right. So tell me about these these fish. They're out in the middle. The big fish are in the middle. It's. I mean, you, you got them both, but um, a lot of the big fish that we've been catching, uh, mostly with those swim baits. Um, have been, they're just laying up on, um, underneath these lily pads, believe it or not. Even in the middle of the day, which is crazy. Yeah, they provide just a little structure so they can ambush. A lot, I mean, it's, it, there's so much food here, Benny, there's, it's crazy. Um, these, all these fish are super fat and healthy, they were eating good all day. Yeah. And as you saw that one bite, you, you were right in the middle and you, you see that big wake just coming Crushed. out. Yep. Um, it's good stuff. And a lot of th you know, times that I like to do is make noise and they just come out from, from, the, from the tight stuff. Again, there's nothing wrong here, big fish, that nice fish came from, from you the know, inside. way, way inside, yeah. 
Albert is a true South Florida sportsman, and he is an inspiration to me as a father figure because um, if we could only all introduce our children to the Everglades and to the outdoors, this world could easily be a better place. Spending time with my kids, with my three boys, is, um, I, I sometimes can't find the words, you know what I mean? Um, Again, we, we do inshore, we do offshore, we, 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 we go camping, we, we go hunting. And I encourage other parents, not only dads, but I encourage and, and moms and, you know, to get out and try it. Get out and try it. You know, they might just like it. You might not like it, but then they like it and then they're gonna hook up with friends that like it. You know, and that's how it is. We need, it's, it's actually contagious, believe it or not. Um, it really is. Um, it was contagious to my kids. I never pressured them to do anything. They did it on their own. They, it's not that they're following my footsteps. Um, it's, they just loved it. They love being out there, uh, out in the water, and, and we have a blast every time we do it. He's a beauty. Hey. That's a fat fish. That's a small one. Nice. <laughs> Isn't this fun? Did you see that bite? That was awesome. That was a sick bite. Great fight too, man. Trying to get you in the trees. Uh, I got it. <laughs> Good girl. Look how thick it is. Nice. To me, since my dad loves fishing, I love it too. I love going offshore, inshore, catching tarpon with him, snook, bonefish, anything. I just love fishing with him. Uh, I'm glad that he passed it down to me. I'm glad that he takes me out. Uh, it means a lot to me that he takes me out and stuff. And I just love fishing, just like he does. Sometimes I get jealous if he goes without me, but. It is what it is. I just love to fish with him, and it's great. This segment is brought to you by PowerPole. Swift, silent, secure. Finally, the weather broke, and the only child that I hadn't had a chance to spend some time with was my oldest, Anna. Anna's special. She, she loves the Everglades like I do in so many ways, and um, to have a chance to fish with her on a nice weather day was just, I knew it was gonna be special from the get. I've been fishing in the Everglades since I could walk and swim. I'm extremely lucky to have a guide as a dad where I can go into the Everglades whenever he asks me if I wanna go, and I say yes every time. With nice weather in Everglades National Park at this time of year, there are so many options. But with Anna, I know she loves to sight fish just like I do. So it was a very easy decision to go out into Florida Bay and to see if we can't get her her first tarpon. You got it. You missed it. You got it. You missed it. Come back, come back, come back. Being on the water so long, it's frustrating when you haven't caught a fish yet. Like I have a mental checklist in my head of all the fish that I've caught. I've caught reds, I've caught snook, I've caught triple tail, I've caught black drum, I've caught like all these big fish but I haven't caught a tarpon, which is like iconic and a staple of the Everglades. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, don't stop. You got it. No, keep going, no. keep real. I am. Real, 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 you got it. No, oh my God. It's very frustrating when you hear your dad talking about how we caught so many tarpon and then you haven't caught one. He's coming, keep going, keep going. Got it, yes. I get to check that fish off my list. This way. There you go. You don't, you don't want to come loose, Mama. Remember. Yeah. Keep it, keep it tension always. Got him. <laughs> Your first tarpon. <laughs> yes. It's the best thing to catch big fish. The best thing to catch fish in general, because they all do that. They all explode in the water when they catch their bait, and they all pull up a good fight when they don't want to be caught. And it's, it, it's. It's amazing. Oh my god. Oh my god. There you go. Snook. Keep reeling. <laughs> got him. You five. Yes. <laughs> you got a tarpon, a redfish, and, and a snook. <laughs> my three favorites. There you go. And I'm super proud that you're. You're interning this summer with FIU and the, and the Water Research Lab. Yeah. And, uh, you know, kind of studying all the things that we've been fighting for. Mm -hmm. What do you think? 
Being out here all these years and seeing all the changes, like the seagrass die off and knowing where all the fish are and then all of a sudden they're not there anymore, and then going out and figuring, why, figuring out why on the science side, it's very cool. It's kind of sad too, but it's a good way to get to the bottom of things. Yeah. I really like the concept of life and how it all works and noticing all the different things and how much we've ruined it really. <laughs> like how in 2015 all the seagrass died off and then there was no fish on the flats anymore. It all fascinated me how quickly something could change. And like in just a year a whole ecosystem can go down the drain. And so I wanted to really study how it works to really pinpoint where everything's going wrong. It all goes down to what we've been doing to the environment. The Everglades is teeming with wildlife. Amazing to be able to see all that different type of life in its natural environment all entwined together. And today, we were out catching a snook, and I'd say like a teenage manatee like came up to the boat and like poked his head up, and it was so cute. Hey, Mr. Manatee. You ever seen a snook before? Hi, buddy. <laughs> How you doing? Hi. What a special day. Life in every single direction. Fish and just general wildlife. And we know it's because we just had a lot of rain. Everglades National Park needs fresh water. Just like Marjorie Stoneman Douglas said in her dedication of her book, River of Grass, many decades ago, we have to send more clean water south. And today was just a perfect example of why and what the result is of us sending water down into Florida Bay.